and welcome to a new episode of Eat on It, my YouTube channel and podcast all about knitting and yarn and other knitting yarn related uh, things. Uh, my name is Ina and I come to you from Norway. I live here in Trøndelag, not far away from Trondheim, which is the third largest city in Norway. And um, yeah, welcome uh, if you're new and welcome back if you have been watching before. And thank you so much for taking time out of your day to checking me out and see what I have been up to knitwise lately. So today is August 19th. It's a Thursday and it's the first week of school here in Norway, at least in the region where we live. So all of my kids are back to school and um, it feels like summer is official, officially over. The temperatures have, uh, have dropped quite a bit. So it's uh, chilly and it is rainy and I have pulled out my woolens again. So I'm not too hot in this lovely woolen sweater today <laughs> which is um, the love note um, a sweater that I knitted a year ago quite exactly and that I have been wearing a lot I love this uh, sweater it is knit out of uh, one strand of thin wool I used um, wool mice lace uh, held together with a strand of silk mohair and it got this beautiful patterned or lace yoke and the rest is, is just stuck in it and it's uh, kind of loose fitting uh, which makes it uh, even more wearable um, because then I can kind of use it even though it's not very cold um, so it's a kind of airy and very nice to to wear when the the weather weather is kind of colder but not super cold if you know what I mean. So yeah, I last spoke to you in late June. Then I just had a long period of ah uh, just completely lack of knitting mojo. And um, I kind of struggled even to crank out a couple of socks. So um, that is just how it is sometimes. And I suspect that most of us, most of us go through phases like that. But I, I kind of relax about it and don't stress too much because I know that my knitting inspiration will eventually come back. And well, uh, for the first couple of weeks after the the podcast was out, or maybe even more, maybe it was three or four weeks, I don't remember exactly, but then my inspiration was kind of low still. But <laughs> suddenly it's just sparked and I have been knitting quite a lot this past um, month I would say and I have been feeling so inspired uh, to cast on new things and uh, as well as trying to complete things that I've already started and um, that is kind of the uh, ideal knitting situation for me when I can allow myself to do new castons even though I still have things to complete already on my needles. I can easily knit on one thing for kind of a period like half an hour or 20 minutes and then the next half an hour I switch over to another thing. That's perfect for me to have like 
several or at least a handful of projects going at the same time. So if I don't care if I don't care for knitting socks um, when I have some spare time to knit then it's perfect if I have a shawl or a sweater or something else going so um, I can vary uh, according to my knitting mood. Okay so um, yeah I have one finished object and I have three things on my needles um, and uh, one of them is a new cast on and the finished item is also a new cast on so that's quite fun actually so I will start off with showing you what's off my needles and since last time I have completed a pair of socks and these are not just a pair of socks these are men's sized socks um, in Norway or European size they are um, 45 and I really don't know what European size 45 is I will check that Okay, so I just checked and European size 45 is a US size 12 and a UK size 11 and a half. So yeah, and uh, I had lots of fun knitting these because it's a very nice marled and color changing yarn uh, which is it's Patton's Croy Socks FX and this particular color way is Cascade Colors and I wasn't kind of sure if I would have enough yarn for a pair so that's why I used a leftover uh, of uh, Rauma PT5 in color 5083 and I thought I might need to use it both for uh, heels and toes and I, I thought it was a fun idea to just uh, knit a couple of rounds on the very top uh, with the same contrast. It's a kind of a minty green color. And then I used one ball for each of the socks. And instead of only using uh, the contrast for the heel itself, I decided to start uh, I think I started five rows above the point where I did my heel my heel turns and I also continued using the contrasting color for four or five rows after I did the heel turn and I thought it would it was kind of a nice effect and in the end it turned out that I had enough yarn to complete the socks uh, without a contrasting toe. And the odd thing is, even though I have exactly the same length on both of the socks, this is what I got left. There's quite, quite a difference uh, on what is left in the two. Uh, of the two uh, balls of yarn. Kind of strange, don't you think? Anyway, I did cast on 60 stitches and I used needle 
uh, 3mm needles and I did a one by one rib on the top for I think 20 rounds and I continued with the rib pattern on the front of the leg and did only uh, stockinette stitches on the back um, on the front there it's a uh, one by three and yeah this uh, rib is continued all down to the toe and um, I will explain how I knit these socks it's exactly the same way of knitting socks that I have been knitting tons of uh, previously and um, when my sock tutorial is up you will get a, hopefully a clear description on how to do them yourself. Yeah. So these socks are going to a dedicated recipient and I hope that he will be happy with his new socks. I was just a little bit distracted by a phone call so but now I'm back and I wanted to show you my first work in progress and it is a whip that has been on my needles for quite uh, some time which is the Loppa, the flea cardigan it's called Dame Jaka Loppa in Norwegian and it is a design by Almira who calls herself a uh, Pinnaguri or the Needle Lady on Ravelry and it is a beautiful uh, color worked yoke, yoke cardigan um, and I have been wanting a loppa for myself for uh, ages all um, ever since she came out with a design which is uh, yeah some years ago now and I have been um, trying out casting on this cardigan I think this is my third attempt actually uh, I wasn't happy with my color choice the first two times and I think also the first time that the size came out way uh, too small for me so I just ripped them back and but now I'm super happy with both the color choice and the size seem to be perfect so yeah I last time I showed you this cardigan I was at this lovely B stitch marker um, and I was at the point where I excuse me, I was at the point where uh, I was about to divide for a body and sleeves so since then and this is just a week ago I think I have divided for sleeves I have put the sleeves on a piece of scrap yarn and I continued working the body for about 10 centimeters which is um, 4 inches but then I thought that I would rather start on one of the arms because I really want to complete the arms before I um, uh, do the rest of the body and the reason for that is it's just uh, a little bit more motiva motivating for me to complete the arms first and then do the body um, yeah I think it's uh, a little bit boring to like have to do the arms last for some reason so I have just put needles into the first arm and worked a little bit on that one and one of the charms of this cardigan is that it is um, it's worked seamlessly so 
this is the point where I picked up the stitches uh, under the arm in the armpits area and look at this it is virtually seamless it's so neat and elegantly designed so there will be no stitching under the arms um, the only thing you need to do in order to complete the cardigan once you finish knitting is of course um, steak it so you can see here is a gap between the two sides of the neckband and uh, I need to cut between here and um, pick up stitches and do uh, the two hems on the sides or the button bands I mean so yeah there's still a way to go on this cardigan but it really flies off the needles right now it's super quick to knit up once you get in the rhythm of doing um, these uh, lice they're called the yarn I am using 100% uh, wool yarn this is a yarn that I bought in Finland Helsinki and I will not try and pronounce the name of this and it is a fingering weight wool in this beautiful like bottle green color oh I think it's so so very nice and I hold it together with a very very light pink and this is a very very soft and non super washed uh, merino yarn which I bought uh, in Copenhagen so these two are souvenir yarns both of them and that makes this cardigan even more special for me um, it's really hard here to see that these uh, flexes are really light pink they could just as easily be in white or light grey. You can you can't really tell. So I don't know. I might should have chosen another color, but yeah, this is what I went with and I'm very happy with how it turns out. And yeah, I am using three millimeter needles on this one as well and I I knit kind of loosely a little bit on the loose side so uh, but I do like the fabric that this gives and I really can't wait to give the cardigan a good wash after I finish knitting I think it will uh, soften up even more and I really hope that um, that it will be a very soft and warm and light garment to wear. Um, when it comes to all of these colors up here in the color work section, they're all scrap yarn really from my stash. Um, all of them are 100% wool and um, on the thinner side like um, fingering or lace weights which I think were quite nicely combined and yeah very happy with this so far I am on a huge um, sweater kick at the moment I have casted on a new sweater and I have been extremely tempted to cast on at least two more but I have been 
I don't know, trying to be monogamous. <laughs> I'm really not, but um, instead of casting on all the things, I thought I would just um, enjoy knitting the things that I will show you now and uh, flea cardigan and hopefully be able to finish those two in not too long and then enable myself to cast on another one after that. So the next sweater I will show you, you haven't seen before. Yeah. So this is the beginning of uh, the Eros sweater, which is a pattern by Petite Knit. And yeah, I have talked about previously how I have been urging and really, really wanting a striped mohair sweater. And I have been kind of struggling finding the right pattern. I have tried casting on for a mohair sweater a couple of times, uh, but it didn't turn out right. So I paused the whole project, but then I watched the latest episode of um, Karen Boutique and Fortuna, which is a Norwegian podcast and a Norwegian yarn shop not far away from where I live and um, there one of the ladies Ellen she just knitted herself a beautiful Eros sweater or uh, an Eros dress actually because you can choose whether you want it to become just a sweater or to continue knitting so that it will, it will become uh, a dress and it was stunning and I absolutely loved her color choices uh, but I was very determined to use um, mohair or silk mohair from my stash and I have to mention that in the original Eros pattern you are supposed to combine one thread of silk mohair together with a fingering weight of wool um, originally, I think it's the Filkorana Arvetta wool. Um, but I really wanted to just use silk mohair. So I've been knitting this, uh, holding two strands of silk mohair together. And I had to do a couple of swatches in order to find the correct needle size to meet gauge in this pattern. And it turns out that my gauge is a little bit tighter than um, than the pattern calls for. So that is why I have chosen to knit, I think it's one size larger than I would uh, if my gauge was correct. But that's okay. Um, yeah. So I have just combined eight of the mohair, silk mohair um, leftovers that I could find in my stash from projects that I have been doing these last years. I think it's so satisfying to put together leftovers or scraps and make something beautiful out of it. That's a uh, Really, really, really something that I enjoy and love doing. Um, yeah. And so this is how it looks so far. I have, uh, this is also a top down cardigan or sweater. And I have divided for sleeves and I am now a little bit down on the body and from this point on I will just knit plain stockinette basically down to the bottom hem yeah 
And what else, what else? I really enjoy and love the construction up here. This is just like a piece of art, really. It's so beautifully designed. These increases here are just uh, extremely nice to, to look at. Um, and I thought it would be fun to just um, mention where all of these colors come from and where I've used them before. So I started up here with a light, light gray Ito which is which is this one and this one I used for the long scarf the striped scarf uh, which I knitted last fall for my friend Veronica and um, then I striped this yarn, it was one strand of this yarn uh, in stripes and um, combined with a linen yarn, a blue linen yarn and I knitted a scarf which was over two meters long for her and it took me forever to do it because you know this thread is super thin. <laughs> um, so that is a, a, a lovely memory to have up here. <laughs> and uh, the second stripe here is uh, Tilia from Filkolana. And this color is actually the one that I have here in my love note. And then we are down to the burgundy red here. And this is Rauma Plum. And the Rauma Plum is the yarn that's in my Tara sweater. Oh, it looks kind of wonky now. I haven't been using this for uh, the whole of summer, of course. So it's been uh, stored and it is a little wrinkly right now. I have used this sweater so much. I mean, I've been thinking about for a long time that I really need to make myself another one of this because it's so versatile and it's a really, really nice um, construction and fit. You know, it sits really well on me. So I love this, really love it. And the color, oh can't get enough of it. <laughs> so that is the third stripe up here. And then this light pink. This is really actually not a silk mohair. It's an alpaca yarn and it is a little bit thicker than the others. So this is just a single strand of this um, alpaca. It's uh, drops brushed alpaca I think it's called mm. and I thought that combining all of these colors it really needed a, a bright pop of something and this was the closest to uh, that with the yarns I had on hand and I originally knitted a um, Christmas pullover for my youngest daughter in this particular yarn um, three years ago I believe so that's fun to have that in here and then there's a, a black and a teal uh, silk mohair from uh, Drops and those yarns are in my fall cardigan which is a pattern from Pickles. It's an open cardigan without buttons 
and it is made out of one strand of um, fingering weights boy it's so light here it's made out of one strand of fingering weight wool, tweedy wool from Pickles, held together with a strand of um, silk mohair. So here is the teal color and here is the black color. And this is also a kind of a scrap project, using up all my leftovers from, of um, uh, merino tweed pickles merino tweed so it's super soft and drapey and warm and nice to wear and then the, the light is crazy uh, it's about eight half past eight in the evening and right now the light is just changing all the time we had some a half an hour ago and then the sun disappeared and now it's cloudy again and I think the camera has a hard time adjusting to the to the lighting situation here so down here we have a lilac lilac -y color it's sunness tin silk mohair or tin mohair one of those two and that is from my cumulus blouse which is also wrinkly <laughs> and this is also a pullover that I have used a lot it's a pattern from Petite Knit and making a second cumulus in black is one of my goals for this fall winter season because it's a lovely design and it's so versatile and I absolutely love the color as well it's really me yeah and the last color and the last color here is um, Tilia from Filcolana again and this is the color Latte which is a beige color and this yarn is also in my Bulblom sweater which I knitted last summer you can't really see it because uh, the, the lilac or purple color is kind of dominant here but it makes a nice marled effect which I love I have been using this a lot as well uh, but it is very very thick and warm so it's definitely only for the the colder months um but yeah i love it so when i went through my stuff uh, my wardrobe to pick out these um, pullovers for you to see i thought it would be a great idea to make a sweater special episode uh, during fall uh, because these are all not on the only ones in my wardrobe obviously <laughs> so the aero sweater and i love working on it i love knitting stripes it's very self-motivating to knit stripes you always want to do one more stripe one more stripe and see how it looks together and oh one more thing uh, in the original pattern you are creating a sequence of colored stripes and you repeat those stripes all throughout the garment but because I don't have like a very consistent amount of um, uh, yarn for this sweater I thought that I would do the stripes a little bit more random because I would 
probably run out of yarn uh, or for one or more of the colors that I have chosen. So then I am not like, um, I will not destroy the, the design, you know, if I suddenly would um, not be able to repeat one of the colors further down. So I think it will be lovely anyway. So the lighting situation is even worse. <laughs> um, so I think I need to be quick now. I will probably have to change location because I think that the reason might be that I have this light wall. The white wall with lights behind me and that doesn't seem to help. The one thing that I've been working on most this summer is the Siggy Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And I have kind of putting a bit of a dent into this. <clears throat> but it's a slow progress because I have so many stitches on the needle right now. And uh, it is becoming a huge shawl. And that I love very much. So I think that last time I was down here and I was just finished with this. I, I think I just started on this lace section. And now I have completed that. I've knitted another quarter stitch section and I have just started on the last lace section. And this section will be the finishing edge of the shawl. Um, yeah, so I'm almost there, you guys. But I have paused this for a while now uh, in order to work on those um, cardigans and sweaters that you just saw. So, but yeah. I love this shawl and I think it would be a masterpiece to wear this later this fall. And I've talked about this so many times that you are probably bored already. <laughs> but um, it's a beautiful and kind of simple design yet very effectful with the combination of lace sections and garter sections. Um, and it's a triangle, triangular shawl and I knit with a Holst Super Soft in the colorway Sweet Pea. And yeah, it's a very rustic yarn but uh, once you wash it, it will swell up and be like become an airy and airy and lovely piece and I know that I will love it. And I think that this pale pink color is something that goes well with my wardrobe. It's definitely my color, don't you think? <laughs> so yeah. So definitely, next time you see this, it will be a finished object that I'm very sure of. So that was what I have been up to knitwise lately. And I have been thinking a lot about what I want to knit this fall. Um, I, I've been feeling so inspired. I've been uh, browsing on Instagram and Ravelry and yeah, I, I have made myself a, a list of 
potential dream knits and I mentioned some of them I want to knit a cumulus and let me have a check let me have a look I want to knit another uh, Riddari uh, I also really want to knit a Sorel sweater I really can't recall right now who the designer is but it is um, round yoke sweater knitted top down and it got some it looks like braids but it's not really braids it's it's a very special stitch that uh, runs through down here all around and uh, so if you're curious you can look up um, the tag Sorel sweater on Instagram and you will see a couple of beautiful ones there and I have given up the idea of knitting myself a Christmas sweater even though I know that we are now in almost the end of <laughs> August and the fall will probably fly like the wind and Christmas will be here <laughs> in almost no time so I'm not sure if I will manage to finish it before Christmas but I thought that maybe if I started one um, then I could make it my advent knit this year and has have a goal of working some rows of it every day before Christmas so we shall see I think I have both the yarns and the pattern on hand already so it should be doable it should be doable so yeah I also have a podcast anniversary this year this podcast is now four years old I started off in August of 2017 and it seems like so long ago <laughs> Uh, on the other hand, time has gone by super quickly. So I really wanted to celebrate my four-year podiversary. Mm. And I will do so in my next episode. And there will be prizes. I will uh, have a giveaway for you guys. And you will be eligible to win um, lovely yarns from my personal stash um, so stay tuned for that and in the meantime I hope that you are having a wonderful August and that you are still stay safe and well um, I have been having a lovely summer um, Kind of relaxing and active at the same time which is the perfect mix for me for my vacation um, and I hope that you are have had a wonderful summer too and that you have some lovely time with your needles and your knitting and I will see you soon bye